Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between FC Barcelona and Bayern Munich. This is going to be a match where Barcelona is going to be playing at home. We are going to be at the Camp Nou. This is considered as one of the biggest games yet and one of the biggest tests that Ronald Koeman will be encountering at his time at Barcelona. This is actually probably his biggest test he will be taking so far since he first started back on August 2020. And looking at who this team is, seeing how Bayern Munich is winning every game, and how they're doing it, Barcelona do have a big mountain to climb if they want to get a big and great result against Bayern Munich. It is so important to start very well in the group stages, right? Barcelona always want to win in their first game. We have to let the other clubs know that this is going to be our group, that we are going to be dominating the UCL group stages. But let me tell you, going up against Bayern Munich and trying to get three points, it is going to be very difficult to do so. Because in the last game, back on September 2020, Barcelona lost 8-2 to Bayern in Munich and it was probably one of the most embarrassing losses Barcelona had to experience and I believe that this is the reason why I am seeing so much nervousness right so much tension going on in the social media because many people are asking how is Barcelona going to be reacting against Bayern Munich is Koeman going to be ready who is going to be starting are we going to see more veterans than youth are we going to see more youth than veterans and it's very hard to predict what players are going to be available and who's going to be starting in the starting 11 which I believe it is the main reason why so many people are concerned concerned because in the past six to seven days, the only type of news we have been hearing is that Barcelona are encountering injured players left and right. Like for example, Serginho Dest. We do not know if he's going to make it to play up against Bayern Munich. We know that Dest is going to be a very important part for Ronald Koeman's game plan against this club. But at the moment, we just do not know if he will be available. He does have a calf injury. He did encounter this calf injury during the international break. So we're going to have to wait and see. As for Jordi Alba, he has been experiencing some muscle discomfort. He's not fully injured, but he is not 100% fit. Like if you were to ask me, could we see a 100% Jordi Alba tomorrow? I do not think so. And about 12 to 18 hours ago, Jordi Alba did not even participate in the full training session only because there is some muscle discomforts within his legs. So there is a chance that he could feature. I'm not going to be saying that it is 100% ruled off, but there is a chance. We're going to have to wait to see what happens tomorrow or in about eight hours from right now. Then moving on towards Martin Brethwaite, who was the most recent player who has encountered an injury and it says here, according to Javi Miguel, that Martin Brathwaite had to leave the training session very early because he was experiencing a lot of pain in his knee. He does have a affected kneecap and he is expected to be out for about three to four months. Now, this is very unfortunate news when it comes to this individual player. I never wish for a player to be out for about three to four months. It really does suck to hear this because I had a feeling that Martin Brathwaite was going to participate in some way against Bayern Munich. Maybe start in the starting 11, maybe come off the bench and try to do some damage against Bayern Munich, I do believe that he was going to be getting those chances. But now we're here. Now we're seeing that Martin Brethwaite is the third attacker that will not be there in the squad list against Bayern. And he was injured before. Like before this training session, he was already having some knee problems. And the only reason why he participated in the training session is because he was really pushing to start in that game. Like he really wanted to play. And I believe that that is very important, right? Because look, do I believe that Martin Brethwaite was going to be that game changer for Barcelona? No. I'm just saying that this club right now under Koeman, they need options. They need a plan B, a plan C. We need to figure out and be prepared what to do if one plan does not turn out as planned. And then, of course, we also do have the absence of Ansu Fati, Dembele, and Sergio Aguero, who were all injured before the season even started. So we do have a total of six players out of this squad list, and all of these players could have been very instrumental towards the participation of this match. But out of these six players that we are talking about, I do see Serginho Dest and Jordi Alba actually making it on time. I do see them pushing it and saying, look, we're going to push you into this game. I understand that you have just came off an injury, but we have no other choice, which is why I do say, I do think that Destin Alba will be making it. Now, Bayern Munich also have some difficulties on their own. They have Lewandowski, who has recently been experiencing some adductor injuries. Nabri injured his back. Koeman has a calf injury, but they are all actually expected to travel to Barcelona. The final training session that they will be having before they go face Barcelona, that is going to be the training session where they are going to be making a decision. Is Lewandowski Lewandowski available? Is Nabri available? Is Komen 100% available? So Barcelona and Bayern Munich do have their own difficulties, but Barcelona right now, they are clearly taking the biggest hit. But let's step away from these injuries, right? Now let's talk about how this Barcelona club here is much more different to the Barcelona that we did see 12 months ago, right? Because we do have a Serginho Dest who is an upgrade of Nelson Semedo. We have a emerging Araujo who is a monster on the back line, who is going to be a 
definitive center back for Barcelona for six to seven years. And then we also do have Frankie de Jong, who has improved his game, and also the arrival of Pedri, who we know he is world class. So it is going to be a very different Barcelona. There are some bright lights. There are some good notes to take from from this Barcelona squad compared to the previous one. No, we do not have Lionel Messi or Antoine Griezmann, but there has been many areas within this squad that has been reinforced. As a matter of fact, we also do have another report where he has stated that Koeman has the idea of bringing Nico Gonzalez and Gavi to the game against Bayern Munich. Koeman actually told Barcelona B that if they wanted to use Nico and Gavi, they can only play a maximum of 60 minutes because he wanted to bring in Gavi and Nico towards that game against Bayern Munich. And then we found out later after that match that Gavi did play only about 45 minutes, but Nico Gonzalez had to play the full 90 minutes. But this is a sign, right? This is a sign that maybe, right? Just maybe Koeman might introduce some brand new youth players up against Bayern Munich. And that is very, very surprising. Is that something that many of us do want to see? Yes, of course. But to play Nico Gonzalez and Gavi potentially against Bayern, that is going to be something very interesting to watch. Ronald Koeman is dropping some clues. Like if you were to really look at everything and what type of players are being included within this squad list, you can get a sense on where Koeman does want to take this Barcelona squad up against Bayern. And that is that he does want to overload the midfield. He wants to leverage the strong points that he does have at this club. And I do believe that if you want to overload this squad list with midfielders, then we should expect Ronald Koeman to potentially use the 3-5-2 system, where it does require more midfielders compared to a 4-3-3. And especially when you know that you do have minimal attackers, where you do not have many attacking options, a 3-5-2 will also work in your favor. And so this is where it gets very interesting, right? Because now that we have an idea, right? Just maybe, I'm just making a prediction moving forward. But if Ronald Koeman is actually going to go for a 3-5-2, which I do assume, because honestly, I just do not see him going for a 4-3-3 with having Continue on the left and then having the mid and MFS Depay up front. Because if there was one thing that Koeman will need to do up against Bayern would be to dominate that midfield. The 3-5-2 is going to be the perfect system. But that is besides the point, right? The player that I do want to bring up is going to be Felipe Coutinho. There has been so much noise going on around this player's name and it is because there has only been news about him being ready, that he is 100% fit, that he is ready to face Bayern Munich. And yes, he has encountered a very serious injury, but every time he did finish those training sessions, there was always positive feelings. He felt very strong. And we know that Koeman is a very big fan of who Coutinho is. If you were to look at the last season, it would really show you that Ronald Koeman intended to use Coutinho in the starting 11. And I do believe that that is what we are going to be seeing against Bayern, which is now going to lead us towards the lineup. How could Barcelona line up against Bayern Munich? So assuming that we could see a 3-5-2, here is going to be the formation. Now, I do want to make three points regarding this starting 11 and the formation. Jordi Alba and Serginho Dest. Again, this is the reason why I do think that Dest and Alba are going to be very important. It is because the 352 could be used. And again, I'm assuming that these two players are going to make it in time because if not, then Koeman is going to be in a lot of trouble. But again, I do assume that they will make it in time. Moving on to point number two, Felipe Coutinho being behind Memphis Depay. If we were to have this type of starting 11 with Coutinho being that creator for Memphis, that is going to be very, very solid. And that is going to be creating a tremendous amount of opportunities for Koeman's Barca. If we can have Coutinho work between the midfield and the forward, where we know that this midfield is going to be working very hard to retain possession and get the ball immediately towards Coutinho in order to find those passing lanes towards Memphis Depay, it could really work because we know that the only thing that Memphis would have to do would be to receive those balls from Coutinho and then be that killer that everybody does know inside the box and score those goals because Barcelona will need to be scoring. It's very similar to what we did see in that match between Sevilla and FC Barcelona last season, that infamous Dembele and Messi duo. We saw Messi being that sole creator for Dembele and Dembele making those runs. It, that, the exact same thing could happen with Coutinho being that sole creator for Memphis Depay and Memphis Depay making those runs. You can see the picture right here. You can see how well this could work. And then moving on towards the last point, and that is going to be point number three, Eric Garcia. Now, this is a 3-5-2 formation. And when you have a formation like this, you are going to be needing a left-footed center back playing in the left center back position. Now, why am I having Eric Garcia in that position when we know that Eric Garcia is a right footer? Because look, the one thing to know about having a great left 
right footer on the left center back position is that the ball is going to be moving much smoother when you do want to rotate the ball around the defensive line it is going to be working much smoother and much faster and then you would already be set up to make those passes towards Jordi Alba be the ball distributor towards that player in order for Barcelona to attack better we have seen Lenglet do that to Jordi Alba many times and it has worked very well if you were right footed right like Ero Garcia and you were to play in this left center back position you're going to have to readjust your position in order to place the best possible pass and I believe that that is something that Kuman should be pushing towards too because I just do not see Lenglet starting in this game yes is Lenglet great at passing those balls towards the left flank to Jordi Alba yes he is great at doing so but when it comes to Lenglet defending a 1v1 or covering the space behind him just imagine Lenglet versus Nabri or Lenglet versus Alfonso Davis I just do not see him getting the job done Eric Garcia on the other hand he is a great ball distributor he has the ability to reposition himself very quickly he's very mobile and if Barcelona come up with the idea to dominate the ball to bring the game towards Bayern which I assume and expect from Koeman's Barcelona then yes a back three of Eric Garcia Gerard Piquet and Araujo could greatly work and also this could be a back three that would be able to absorb the pressure from the opposition and be very technical and move the ball around very quickly and distribute those balls into the left flank the center flank the right flank and overall give a very great performance but that is going to be it right Barcelona have all of the creativity and the technicality and all of the opportunity to actually beat Bayern Munich but you have to do it well let me know what you guys think about this starting 11 do you guys agree with this starting 11 do you actually think that it could work or if not what is your preferred formation who is your preferred players to be starting in that game could it be a front three of Felipe Coutinho on the left Memphis Depay in the center and the mid on the right let me know in the comment sections down below that is going to be wrapping up today's Barcelona daily news thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are new here welcome to the channel please like subscribe comment and I will see you guys in the next video